Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. First off, I want to apologize for any wind noise that might come into the video. It's a little windy out here today. Today we're going to take a look at this layered 2 meter antenna. This is a very basic, simple quarter wave 2 meter antenna that I want to put on my Chevy Tahoe to replace the 5 8 antenna that I have had on here for a while. Now there's nothing wrong with the 5 8 wave antenna, it's just too big for this vehicle. I used to have it mounted lower down on the fender of a pickup truck that I had and when I got rid of the truck and got this I just reused the same antenna but it makes it difficult to go through drive throughs or go into parking garages. Those are things I don't do very often with this vehicle but when I do have to say go into a parking garage I've got to stop and take that 5 8 antenna off. With the quarter wave, I think that's a much shorter antenna and I'll have plenty of clearance. I won't have to keep taking the 5 8 antenna off. Before we get started with the antenna replacement, let's take a look at the layered and see what came in the package. So as I said, this is a very simple antenna. It's just a quarter wave NMO mount. The only thing supplied in the package, of course, is the antenna itself. You can see it's a pretty thin wire that makes up the radiating element. Then there's a rubber boot here that covers the interface to the NMO mount. Next up we have this collar with the layered logo on it. You can see this is made out of metal. I think this is painted brass. You can see there on the inside there's no paint on the threads or the inner part of the collar. But anyway, this just slides over the antenna and then we'll compress down over the rubber boot there and squish this onto the NMO mount and provide a good connection and presumably a weatherproof connection. And then last up is this rubber washer that'll go underneath the collar and this will provide some weather sealing against the surface of the vehicle where it's mounted and it'll also provide uh, interface so that it doesn't scar up the paint when it's tightened up. So here's a quick look at the old 5 8 antenna that I have on the Tahoe. This antenna I've probably had for 20 years. I picked it up at a ham fest relatively inexpensively and it has worked beautifully ever since and I've had it on three different vehicles since I've owned it. But as you can see up here on the top of the Tahoe it really is kind of a tall antenna. Now one last thing before I change the antenna. Let's do an unscientific comparison between the old 5 8 and the new layered antenna. So right now I'm still running the 5 8 up there on the roof and we're going to just try a few repeaters in the area and see what the signal strength is coming back on the 5 8 and then once I swap over to the layered we'll do the same test and see if there's any difference. So first up let's check the NA1RC repeater in Lebanon, Connecticut. This is about 15 or so miles south of me. This is testing. Okay, so as you can see, this repeater was coming in full scale on the 5 8 Okay, here's the Bears repeater. This one is about 10 or 11 miles southwest. You can see it's almost full scale, maybe one or two bars short of that. We've already got a conversation going there, so I don't need to key that one up. So next up is the W1TOM 147.000 machine. This one is 25 or 30 miles northwest of me. This repeater is located in Granville, Massachusetts. I'm not sure if I can even key this one up, but let's give it a try. This is testing. You can see this one's coming back with one or two bars. It's fluctuating a little bit because the wind is blowing the 5 8 antenna around a bit. Here's another repeater. This is the Warren 147.210 repeater. You can see that was coming in about half scale. That one is about 15, maybe 20 miles due north of here. Yeah, I heard this repeater was back on the air, so I programmed in the frequency. Just wanted to make sure I could key it up. I'm also going to be testing out another antenna here in a minute on my vehicle, so I wanted to see how I was hitting it with the old antenna first and then I'll try it again with the new antenna. Okay, sounds great. Uh, I was about to leave for a few minutes, maybe 10, but I'm monitoring, so if you're on in a few minutes, uh, some of us will be back here as well. So I'll be glad to give you all the signal reports you need there. Uh, okay, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll give it a try in a bit. Probably going to take me that long to swap the antenna around anyway. So. If you're here, I'll catch you later. Thanks for coming back to me. 7-3 for now. Now we'll throw the layered antenna on and see how it does.
Like I said before, we're gonna put the metal collar over the rubber boot. Before I mount the antenna, I'm gonna take the rubber gasket. I'm gonna put that over top of the NMO mount and get, get it seated down around the NMO mount and down onto the roof of the Tahoe. Okay, so a couple things to mention before we mount the antenna itself. First up is you may have already noticed that this NMO mount is not a true NMO mount. This is a 3 8 NMO mount. So you only need to drill a 3 8 hole in the roof of the vehicle. Now in this case, the center post of the mount was sticking up a little bit too far for this profile, low profile antenna. So this wasn't able to kind of screw down onto the mount and secure tightly. So what I've done is I've gone inside the vehicle and I've added some washers underneath the bottom of the mount. Now that's maybe not ideal, but it should still work just fine. And the net effect of that is that it lowers the post down so that it's just slightly proud of the top of the mount here, which is more like a true NMO mount. So now this antenna should mount on just fine. The other thing I've done, not sure if it's visible in the camera or not, is I've added just a small amount of never sees to the threads on the antenna base here. I've had problems with antennas before, kind of welding themselves to the NMO mount, and then you can't get this centerpiece off if you take the antenna off the vehicle without ruining it. So having said all that, let's get the antenna on the Tahoe. So that should be on good and tight. Let's go through and do the repeater test and see what we get. So as you can see, I've got my MFJ259C connected up to the antenna and we're at 144 megahertz right now, which of course is the low end of the two meter band. And you can see that we're getting a SWR of 1.6 with a resistance of 37 and a reactance of 18 ohms. Let's do a sweep of the two meter band and see what it looks like. So you can see right here about halfway through the band at 146 megahertz. I'm getting about a 1.5 SWR, resistance of 33 ohms, and reactance of 3 ohms. So things are getting a little bit better as I go higher in frequency. And then you can see up at the top of the band, SWR is down to 1.3, resistance is 40, reactance is eight. So this antenna is definitely a little on the short side. So just for fun, I'm gonna keep going up and see where this thing centers out at. You can see the antenna seems like it's best right around 150 megahertz. SWR is 1.1, no reactance, and a resistance of about 56 ohms. So the antenna is definitely a little on the short side. Okay, so I think I'm gonna run the antenna right where it is now. I'm not gonna do any tuning with it. I've kind of run out of time for today to do anything with it anyway. So I'll at least run it this way for a couple of weeks and see what happens. But if time permits in the next couple of weeks, maybe I'll fool with it just to see if I can get that last little bit of performance out of it. But for now, I think this is gonna be just fine. So now that we've got the antenna mounted and tested with the analyzer, let's go ahead and do the unscientific repeater signal strength test one more time. This is testing. As you saw, the NA1RC repeater was still full scale, which it was before. Okay, so nobody's talking on this repeater right now. I'm going to skip this one because I know that when I throw my call out, somebody's going to come back to me and I want to wrap up the video. So we'll do this one last. So next up is the W1TOM repeater. Again, this one is probably the furthest away in terms of this test, 25 or 30 miles to my northwest. Let's see what we get. This is testing. And you can see I'm still able to key it up. I, I don't know, maybe it was a little stronger before, but it seems like it's about the same. Again, it's windy out today, so things are moving around both my antenna and probably the antenna at the repeater site. So that could be 
kind of skewing things a bit, but it does seem to be about the same as it was before. So next up, let's try this Warren machine. This is the machine where the guy came back to me and gave me a signal report. Let's see if he's out there again. This is testing. Got the uh, new antenna on the vehicle here. And the repeater actually seems a little stronger than it was before, which I'm kind of surprised about. I think things are moving in the right direction. Well, you got a solid signal with the repeater. Hear everything you're saying? Very good signal. So that's pretty much going to wrap things up for testing the Laird quarter wave 2 meter antenna. If you'd like to learn more about this antenna, there will be a link down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is also linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.